Okay, so this video will focus on the appealing to possibility fallacy. The structure of the video is pretty straightforward. I'll describe what the fallacy is, I'll talk through its form, I'll look through a couple examples, and then I'll talk about some common uses, some more everyday uses you might find this fallacy in. Uh, in addition, I'll talk a little bit about when people and why people might actually commit this fallacy, like what their purpose is. In looking at those cases, you'll have a better understanding of uh, when to be on guard that this fallacy might occur. So let's dive right in. What's, what's the fallacy? So the fallacy comes in two principal varieties. Uh, the first variety is that it reasons from something being possibly the case that it might occur, that it's logically possible, to it actually being the case. The second variety is reasoning from that something is possibly the case, that it is likely to be the case. That is, there's a good chance that it will occur. This is a fallacy just because just because something's possible doesn't mean it's actual, doesn't mean it will be the case, and it certainly doesn't make it likely that there's a good chance, nor does it mean that something is necessarily the case. So possibility doesn't imply actuality or likelihood or necessity. Let's look, the, look at the, the form or structure uh, that this uh, argument or fallacy occurs. So the structure here is as follows. Something is possible, therefore something is the case. Or what I think is more common way it's expressed, something is possible, therefore something is likely. Here likely is used in the sense of that there is a good chance of it occurring, that it's uh, not just there is some likely possibility or um, probability that it would occur like one in one billion but uh, you know it's a it's a you, you could bet on it being the case again this argument is invalid which is one of the reasons it's a fallacy because the premise of the argument can be true that is something can be possible without being actual or likely uh, one thing to note is that you could actually make the argument valid so what would you need to do to make the argument valid well, what you would need to do is add the following unstated premise. So again, someone asserts that something is possibly the case. They say X is possible. Well, uh, what they would need to assert is the premise that any X that is possible is also likely or is also the case. This is usually unstated, um, but you need to be committed to it if you wanted to draw the conclusion that that X is likely. Um, but again, you know, the second premise is false. Uh, it's possible that there are two-headed unicorns in New York City, but uh, it's certainly not actual and it's uh, definitely not likely or it's not a good chance that this is true. So let's look at some examples of this. These examples will be pretty basic, but we'll look at some more everyday examples a little bit later. So the first example, let's say someone buys a lottery ticket and they might reason as follows. Hmm, I might win. Uh, and then they would reason to the conclusion if they were to commit the fallacy, uh, it is likely I will win the lottery. People usually don't say this explicitly to themselves because if they did, they would realize how silly they sound. Uh, but sometimes they act or feel or hope or wish or behave as though they commit this fallacy. They might start thinking about all the things that they are going to purchase with their winnings or start shifting their behavior ever so slightly as though they are, there's a good probability that they will win. So no one's going to say this, but people are going to kind of daydream or feel like it is the case. Not everyone, of course. Uh, here's another example of the fallacy here. Uh, the first premise is it might rain today. Well, if it's likely to rain, then I should bring my umbrella. Therefore, I should bring my umbrella. Here we have a kind of shift between uh, the possibility of it raining to uh, unstated premise, which is not listed here, that if it's possible it would rain, then it's likely that it would rain. And if it's likely that it's going to rain, then you should bring your umbrella. Note that, you know, maybe premise one can be read in two different ways. It might be read simply as asserting the possibility, but if it asserts the probability of rain, then the argument or fallacy would not be committed. Uh, you'd simply be reasoning from the probability of it raining to the need to bring an umbrella, not the possibility of it raining to the probability of it raining to the need to bring an umbrella. I think the most famous um, example of the appeal to possibility fallacy is Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law is whatever can go wrong will go wrong. This particular law is researched in 
uh, in a number of disciplines, uh, specifically in engineering or anyone that has to kind of make something. Um, and it can be restated as an argument. Someone can assert, well, some things, there are certain things in this world that can go wrong. And of those things that can go wrong, uh, they are likely to go wrong or they will go wrong. Again, this is invalid. There are certainly many things that could go wrong or uh, they could fail or break or something along the lines, but it isn't likely that they will go wrong and it isn't actual that they will go wrong. Okay, so what I think is uh, worthwhile to look at are maybe some more everyday uses. People aren't really explicitly arguing that they, from the possibility of winning the lottery to the actuality. So let's look at some more common or everyday instances of the appeal to possibility fallacy. So I think the key point is, in thinking about this fallacy, is that people rarely assert the conclusion of the fallacy. What they'll do instead is simply assert the premise. They'll simply appeal to a possibility of something occurring, and then they'll kind of hush up. They won't say anything. Instead, they'll rely on their interpreters or people that they're talking to to actually make the, actually to draw that conclusion. So they're almost suggesting that, you know, hey, you over there who I'm talking to, did you know that something is possible? And then they're encouraging you to draw the conclusion that because something is possible, it is likely. So let's look at a version of this. Um, someone might say, well, something can go wrong. They just assert X can go wrong. And then you kind of think to yourself, well, you can have two responses here. You might say, well, yeah, lots of things can go wrong or lots of things are possibilities. So what? What are you trying to tell me? And another response, though, is, oh, my goodness, you're telling me that this is actually going to go wrong here. Uh, so you are actually led to from someone asserting that something is possibly could go wrong to the likelihood that it would go wrong. So someone else inserting their possibility is kind of encouraging you to commit this fallacy. So let's look at some more concrete examples. And in looking at it, I also want to think about um, why people might actually commit this fallacy and the circumstances under which they would. So I think even though there, I think there's tons of reasons why people might commit this fallacy, I want to kind of talk about two in particular. One is I think sometimes people will commit this fallacy or invite you to commit the fallacy when they want you to add extra precautions or to be safe. Uh, the second is, is because they have a negative attitude towards the world and they want to sort of manipulate you to, to do something, usually along the lines of some kind of negative persuasion or manipulation. So we'll look at both of these cases. So here's one. Um, this one would be, suggest that uh, someone's trying to encourage you to take extra precautions about a particular action you're going to undertake. So let's say there's a possible robbery and you say, well, I'm going to the store to get some bread. This is a pretty everyday activity. And you have a friend and that friend says, well, it's possible you might get robbed. Be careful. <laughs> Well, what is it you are telling me here? Are you telling me it's likely I'm going to get robbed? Certainly many things are possible, uh, but in raising this possibility, you must be saying something stronger or inviting me to consider some stronger claim. So the reasoning looks something like this. It looks like I might get robbed. Therefore, it's likely I will get robbed. Therefore, I should be careful. Uh, and you'd only say I should be careful if there's some good chance that you're going to get robbed. If there is just a mere logical possibility that you might get robbed, you are not going to be looking over your shoulder left and right. Instead, it's one of many of the possibilities out there that you just know that are out there, but you don't change your behavior based upon. But if you knew it was likely you were going to get robbed, then you would follow this individual's life that you would take extra caution or care in going to the store. Here's another example. Let's say you're preparing for a vacation and you need to figure out how to get to the airport. So you have two different ways. You say, well, I have a friend that individual's name is John and John's going to take me to the airport. Um, the, on the other hand, you say, well, if John can't come through, he has a reason he can't make it all at the last minute. I'll call a taxi or an Uber, but I have other ways of getting there. Well, you might have a friend that says, hmm, you know, it's possible that neither John nor the taxi will show up. Well, yeah, this is certainly possible, um, but what are you supposed to do with this possibility? Well, it looks like your friend is actually inviting you to draw the conclusion that it's likely that neither John nor the taxi will show up, and so you should arrange some extra precaution here. 
So the reasoning looks as follows. It's possible your taxi won't show up and John will cancel. Therefore, it's likely that your taxi and John will cancel. Therefore, you should come up with a third way of getting to the airport. So again, this is a case where the another individual encourages you to make the uh, appeal to possibility fallacy. So the first, the first reason or first set of cases where an individual might use the appeal to possibility fallacy is when they want you to make extra precautions, you know, guard against, you know, being robbed or uh, have another fail safe uh, if individuals cancel because you're trying to get to the airport. Uh, a second reason is uh, hard to characterize. I think that people sometimes try to get you to change your behavior or, or your views, and they'll use the appeal to possibility fallacy in order to do this. Um, so they'll try to sow doubt in your mind, make you question what you believe. They'll try to get you to lower expectations as well as create higher expectations. Um, they'll use it to promote conspiracy theories, fear monger. Um, and a, an interesting one is that they will use this fallacy to promote a kind of worldview where the inanimate objects actually take an interest in what your outcome is. So the inanimate objects will sort of work against you or um, are on your side to get what you want. I can't actually talk about all of these. It would take too long. So I'm just going to focus on the second one that deals with changing behavior. So here's an example, again, where an individual will try to get you to change your behavior by using this appeal to possibility fallacy. And they actually won't state the conclusion. They'll just state the premise and actually ask you or invite you to draw the fallacious conclusion. So the example works as follows. You say, hey, we're going to a party. You know, maybe you're optimistic about this. And a friend says, well, the party might be bad. And then you say, well, it might be bad. Well, it might be good. It might be neutral. I'm, you know, th this is just a possibility. Do you know something I don't know? And the individual might say, well, I don't know, but let's not get our hopes up. And so here there's this suggestion that we should l change our behavior, change our mindset about this particular party. Um, and so the reasoning looks as follows. The party might be bad. Therefore, it's likely to be bad. And if it were likely to be bad, then we reasonably would lower our expectations because it's not going to be as good as we maybe originally thought. But again, this commits the appeal to possibility fallacy. Uh, I actually think that children, in my experiences with them, have used the fallacy in a different way. They actually are pretty optimistic about the its use. So an example would be, let's say we're going to a party and grandma is going to be there and the child might say, well, she might give me a present. Again, this is a logical possibility. And then let's say I tell my daughter, oh yeah, grandma will be at the party. And then my child begins to daydream that she will get a present. Uh, it's likely that she'll get a present or she'll bet me that she'll get a present. So the reasoning again is I might get a present, possibility, therefore I will get a present. Uh, and this commits the fallacy. So this is the appeal to possibility fallacy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have examples of the appeal to possibility fallacy that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear them. I actually find examples of fallacies rel relatively funny. And so if you left them down in the comments below, I definitely would read them.